Hello and welcome to another episode of the Clever Dev. Today we are going to look at the MUI typography component and we are going to do some pretty basic styling on it. Um, you can see that we've got it both horizontally and vertically aligned within this stack component and also we have quite a bit of styling on it. We have ellipses on it even though they're not visible right now and we have some italic and bold styling, and then just some kind of typical default styling to make it look nice inside of the stack component. So if you're interested in learning the ins and outs of styling the typography component, then stick around. As usual, we have some code in place already to speed things up a little bit. And what I've got so far is just that stack that I mentioned. So it was that gray box in the intro, and I've got some styling on it. And currently I actually already have the styling in place for that center vertical and horizontal alignment. And we'll explore that a little bit more in depth. But first I want to create the typography component with its styling that we saw in the intro. And I'm gonna use styled components this time. Usually I just use the SX prop in these videos and that is fantastic and really it'd be perfect for this situation. But just to have something a little bit different, I am going to use the styled component. So you can see I've already got that import in place. And let's just walk through the syntax for that. So I am going to create my styled typography right here. And what that looks like is it's got this styled syntax right here. And then there's really two containing pieces of syntax here, the first and the second pair of parentheses here. So what goes inside the first is always the component that we're going to enhance. So in this case, typography, and then if you actually want, then you can add some options. So the styled API allows for some options that change the way that the uh, component will present in the DOM, not necessarily how it visually renders, but you can add some uh, options that maybe change the name of the classes on the style typography that we're going to create. You can block some props from being passed in and so on, some pretty cool options. But that's not what this video is about, just wanted to mention it. The focus of this video, however, is on this second set of parentheses. And inside of here, we are going to have an arrow function, and it's where we will add the actual styling values for our styled typography. So um, just to get a little bit of the basic syntax in here, then the first thing that we need is I'm going to add the theme. And so this is kind of shorthand syntax for extracting the theme out of the props. Really what you might have here is something like this, but I'm only going to use the theme value from the props and it's just passed in by default. I don't have to do anything down here in my JSX to make sure that the theme gets passed in. Then the next thing that I need is make sure that I either have a return statement or wrap the styling curly braces or the styling object with um, a set of parentheses so that there's an implied return. So now that I've got those two things in place, let's actually get some of our styling values in here. So I am going to add a border radius of let's say four, and I'm going to add border, and this will just be a one PX solid. Let's add some border color. And right here, I'll actually access that theme object and this is one of those areas that the SX prop has a small advantage over the styled API because I have to access the primary main color like this. Whereas if we were in the SX prop, we'd just be able to do something like this. But we're not. So we have to access it using the theme object. Not particularly a hardship there. Anyway, let's get some background color on here. And I'm going to set a max height. The reason for that is so that we can see that our alignment is working. If we let our typography take the entire height available, then it's hard to tell if we've accomplished center aligning as we hope. So I'll set a value of three rim on there and I'll put a little bit of padding and margin on here. Now we'll take a look at this in the app in just a moment. One thing I want to mention is if this was the SX prop, then these would be using the theme spacing function. And so it'd be passing a value of eight into the theme spacing function. The theme spacing function by default takes whatever value is passed in and multiplies by eight PX. 
So this would be 64 px here. This would be 32 px here. Uh, the border radius is a little bit different. It has its own system, but this would be pulling from the default theme border radius system. So it wouldn't actually be 4px. However, we are in the styled API. So literally this will just have a value of 4px. This will have a value of 4px eight, and 8px right here for the margin. And of course, before we can look at it in the DOM, we actually need to add it down here. So I am going to add my style typography and I will give it some text of aligned typography just so that we can make sure and see it. So let's take a look. That's looking pretty good. So that was pretty quick to set up. Like I said, it's centered because I already had some uh, justify content and align items on the stack right here. And we can see those here in the styles area of DevTools. But let's take a look at our MUI typography component. And we can see what I was talking about, how that's just getting directly applied, 8px, 4px, etc. And um, it really looks pretty good. So what I want to add, based on my keyword research, a lot of people are looking for how to add italic styling, how to set a bold font weight, how to add ellipses to the typography. So we'll get those things in next. Before we go back to the code, I want to mention a couple of things. First, there is a link to a post that has all the code for this in the video details. So if you want to copy paste any of this, I recommend checking that out to make that easy. And second, I have a course on Udemy for MUI and it's all about styling components. So the typography is one of the simpler components to style, but I build a full app in that course and uh, go deep into the styling, the props, et cetera, on some of the more difficult components like the text field, the data grid, uh, the table, the the grid itself, and the cards. And so some pretty cool stuff there. I definitely recommend checking that out. All right, back here in the code, what we want to add is our styling for italic. So what we want there is the font style value. And it's as simple as saying italic. Next up is the font weight for adding bold. The ellipses we could add through CSS up here. However, there's a handy little prop that the typography component has on it, and it is the no wrap prop. And it adds the three pieces of ellipses styling that are necessary. So let's go take a look at that in the style section of DevTools. All right, back over here in our app, we can see just visually it is at least italicized. Let's make sure it's got the bold on there as well, and it sure does. So on these smaller font sizes, sometimes it's hard to tell. But we also have the proper things in place for ellipses. So that's overflow hidden, text overflow ellipses, and white space no wrap. And we can give that a quick test by just limiting the max height, which I'll just do in DevTools. And I mean the max width, we'll do that in DevTools here. Let me say 100px, and there we go. It just adds that ellipses. It's a really handy prop. The final piece of styling that we're going to take a look at is our alignment. And so the alignment happens at the parent. So we have our stack that's wrapping our typography. So that means we need to take a look at the stack in the DOM and then DevTools here and make sure that the appropriate stylings are on it to make it align its children. So we see that it has display flex and that's one necessary piece. And then when display flex is applied, then by default, you're gonna have a flex direction of row. Um, and that's across all CSS, not just the stack. So interestingly, um, the stack component has flex direction by default. So I didn't have to add that. It's one of just a few components that either has flex by default or has some useful props uh, for adding flex quickly because these components, uh, the grid is another, for example, but these kinds of components are so often used for wrapping children in some way and aligning children components that uh, they just were built to be used for that and have display flex by default. So then what we care about after that is justify content and we care about, and I have to take off that WebKit version as well, and we care about align items. So when neither of those are applied, then the default is a top and left alignment so we can see just messing around here in DevTools that when flex direction is row, then justify content affects the horizontal alignment. Interestingly, if we change this to column, then it actually affects the vertical alignment. So you can see how that is now vertically centered, even though all I've got on here is justify content.
So a pretty interesting thing, and just keep that in mind anytime you're trying to align some some items here. So anyway, um, let's take a look at what happens with our um, align items. So I will say, let's say flex end on that. So that's how you get a start or end value is flex start or flex end. And then center is, of course, the center value. Then there's a couple other interesting ones like space between and space around. But those are only applicable when you have more than one child inside of a wrapping container. So anyway, let's go back to the code and just make sure that you're familiar with where you would apply these stylings in the code. In our code here, then I've got this default styling object, which I have applied to the stack through the SX prop. And so, of course, that's where we have the styling values that I added. So to reiterate this, then I will change my aligned items to, let's say, flex end. I'll keep my justify content at center, and we'll be able to go back to the app and see how this aligned item flex end has changed the visual appearance of our app. So there we go. Our align items is now flex end, and we can see that, in fact, that is vertically aligned to the bottom. I hope that this content was helpful, and I hope you have a wonderful day.